This problem is a pretty interesting problem, not in the fact that it's big in any way, but because we're using half wave symmetry and um, quarter wave. So we're using quarter wave symmetry to go over this. When we look at this problem, it looks just like this half wave symmetry. So what we have right here in a signal with half wave symmetry, all even numbers vanish. That's gonna leave into the quarter symmetry. So we can see that the period for this is from zero to pi, but we're only looking at the range from zero to t over two. So that is a specific part we're going to be looking at. Well, there's a first, a few things that we can do. Since we know that we're using half wave symmetry to go into quarter wave symmetry, we're going to use this. And this is the part that half wave symmetry comes in due to half wave symmetry, a uh, v is equal to zero and a k is equal to zero for k evens. So let's look at this, right? So a of v is zero volts and a of k for the evens is equal to zero, right? So that's why it's only asking us for the odds. That's a specific reason because it's saying that it's uh, even is zero. Now for B of K, there's this bit I forgot to include, but it's that B of K is equal to zero for all K because the periodic function is even. So this is also going to be zero. Now we have this right here for A K, which is really nice. And what I'm going to do now that we've gone over all of this is I'm just going to take this and move it away because we were only um, looking at it for the first part. And so we're left with this. I'm also going to move away the BK, but I'm going to leave the AK because we need this equation to solve for what we're doing. So coming back to the problem, we need to start writing this out. Well, we need to write an equation for F of T because we weren't given it. Now for the f of t, this can be found in the notes linked below the like button. It's super important to look at this. It's on approximately page 146. And this is where we have the quarter wave symmetry with a description and more about it. So we're solving for v of p. So this means that our vt is going to be equal to Inside of here, we are going to have a four times our VP divided by T, this is big T, times little t. Now, this is if this point was starting at zero. But in our equation, we have this underneath the zero. So we have to include a minus VP inside of here. So this is what our F of T is going to look like. And now we can start writing it inside of here. So we are going to say that our a of k is equal to, we are going eight over t, we have the integral from zero to t divided by four, and then we have our f of t inside of here, which is four vp times little t divided by, and then we have this big t, and then we have our minus vp inside of here. And this is being multiplied by the cosine. We have the k times omega naught, we know omega naught, can be rewritten as two pi divided by t, and then we have little t here, and then dt. Now, I want to factor out the vp, and then I'm gonna factor this cosine into everything. So we're gonna have eight times vp divided by t, and then inside of here, we are going to have the integral from zero to t over four. We are going to then have our v, oh, actually not v, because we factored it out. We're gonna have a four times our t times a little t. And then we have our cosine. We have k two pi times little t divided by t. And then we have a plus, right? Or no, wait, we have a, and then we have a minus. We're going to then have, because the VPs factor out, just a cosine and then the k two pi times little t over big T, and then our d of t here. Now we need to take the integral of this. I included um, this at the bottom right here. I actually didn't need to include what's to the right of it because we already have it up top, so I'll just delete it. But this right here is going to be 
the integration of t times cosine a of t, right? We just have a constant out front, so we're going to have to factor that in, but that's no biggie. So we have 8 vp divided by t, and now we are integrating. So inside of here, we have our constant 4 over t, right? And then we're going to have 1 over a squared. a is going to be everything inside of here. This is our a. And so um, we can just flip this because it's 1 over this. So it's going to be t squared times k 2 pi, right? But since it's squared, this bottom part is going to be a 4 and then pi k squared. And then we have the cosine of our a times t. So the cosine is going to be k 2 pi times little t over big T. And then we have to do a addition. We're going to do 1 over a again. So we'll just have 1 over uh, 2 pi times k and then times little t times the sine of our a k 2 pi little t divided by t. And this is our equation for the first part. Now deriving the second part, or I'm sorry, integrating the second part, we're going to have a minus. We're going to do the sine. We are going to have k 2 pi times little t over big T. And then we have to multiply this by t and then k 2 pi. And so this is our equation. We're going from t over 4 to 0. Or actually, it's from 0 to t over 4. But that doesn't matter. So, um, it, well, it does matter. But anyways, now we can start simplifying a little bit. So this t is going to simplify with this t. This 4 is going to cancel out with this 4. I realized I made a mistake. Oh man, remember when I was talking about this out front? We need to factor this in. Well, I factored it in right here, but I didn't factor it into the next part. So remember that this it was out front here. So when we do this, it's basically like surrounding this in t or I'm sorry, 4 over t. So we have to factor it in here, which we did, and then we have to factor it into this next one. So factoring into this next one, we are going to have 4 over t. That's my bad. Make sure to include whatever you're factoring in. We can see that the t's are going to cancel out. The 4 is going to simplify. It's going to become a 2. And then on the far right side, there's nothing we can do to simplify this. So I'm just going to come down because I need a little bit more room. And now we can start plugging in our values. This is going to be pretty big, so I'm going to start over here. We're going to have 8 vp over t, and then we're going to start with our t over 4. We always start with the t over 4. And so we have the constant t over pi k squared out front, right? And then we have cosine, and we're just going to plug everything in just to try to minimize error, okay? We're not, we're not going to be simplifying anything right now. So this is what we have right here, the t over 4, and then we have this being plugged in. This is the second part, so we're just going in like this, and then we are going to have the last sign. So we have a minus, we have t divided by k 2 pi. We are going to have the sign k 2 pi times little t. Well, actually, hold up, there should not be a little t in there, we have to plug that in little t represents what we're integrating. So we're gonna have t over 4t. And now we have to plug in the zero. So we're gonna do a minus. This is where I'm just gonna plug it in because it's super simple. Um, if we plug in a zero for this part, well, it's just gonna be one because it's all gonna zero out, cosine of zero is one. So we're going to have a one over our pi times k, and this is squared. And remember, because this is this is out front, this is what this is. Now let's plug in 0 for sine. This all zeroes out. We know sine of 0 is 0, so we'll do plus 0. And then the same thing for the last one. Sine of 0 is just 0, so minus 0. OK, now we can look at this. So inside of here, these are going to cancel out, and this is going to simplify. We're going to have pi over 2. Cosine pi over 2 we know to be 0, so this is zeroed out. All right, now let's look at the next one. We can see that this 2 is going to simplify with this 4. And well, these two look very much alike. Actually, they're identical. 
And since they're identical, well, they're just going to subtract from each other. So we have a zero for this. And so the only thing that we have here is this minus 1 over pi k, and this is squared. And we can see that this fits into our answer. So we have this, um, let's see, we have the vp, which is vm. I'll just say vp is equal to vm. It's the same thing, vmax, vp. So we are going to have our vmax divided by, I forgot to carry this t right here over here. So instead of just being 1 over this, it should be a 1, because remember, we still have this 1 up here. Forgot about that. The t's are going to cancel out. And then we are going to have our pi times k. All of this is squared on the bottom. And then we can see all that's left is a minus 8. So our answer here is going to be a minus 8 times v max, but that's all included divided by k pi squared. So that is how we would go about solving for this problem, all the theory behind it, and more information can actually be found about this linked below the like button. But unfortunately, there's no examples of it in the notes. So this is the best example, and it's a pretty good one as well.